Mafia Music Network. Offering underground, pop, and esoteric cinema. Discover more at MoviaMusicNetwork.com. Five storybook characters find themselves wishing for a better life. When a witch tasks one of them to retrieve four magical objects, the five strangers enter a mysterious woods. Princes and castles, why would you run away? It's not quite what I expected. There, they will find they must be careful what they wish for in Into the Woods. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm here with Kevin and Sean. We're here to talk about Into the Woods. We've all just seen it. Sean, what did you think of this movie? Into the Woods. Uh, this is, of course, an adaptation of the Stephen Sondheim Broadway musical. That's now been picked up by Walt Disney Studios and made into a movie. And it's an imperfect movie, but I was entertained. I enjoyed the musical numbers. I actually came out humming at least one of them, which doesn't seem to happen very much. Agony? Were you humming agony? Agony! Oh, gosh. <laughs> I was uh, humming Giants in the Sky, uh, Children Will Listen, and I can actually name numbers from this, wow. from this show. Mm. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I had fun. What more can I say? I'm not a big Sondheim fan. You don't like Sweeney Todd? I did not like Sweeney Todd, uh. um, and I didn't like Sunday in the Park, which I think they're just, I just don't like, it's not the type of musical I like. I like the Chicago Rent yeah. type musicals, you know? Yeah, fun musicals. Yeah. It actually did remind me in a very strange way of Rent because you look at a, a play like Rent and it's very adult and it's got some very serious subject matter. And Into the Woods is have, it does have some very dark material in it, but it's very glossy. It does this Disney sheen over the whole thing and then you have the Rob Marshall thing trying to bring high energy to every number, but it doesn't quite fit because it just seems like a marriage of unlike minds. That being said, it's fairy tale. It's got some catchy, adorable songs, so it's still a pleasant experience. There's certainly a Disneyification, if yeah. that's a word. I think over this mm -hmm. movie, I'm, I, apparently Stephen Sondheim approved all the changes. Mm -hmm. So if he approved it, he approved it. But there is a certain sense of the darker elements of this play, and the, which is now made into the movie, seems slightly downplayed here. Right. I mean, there like are the some wolf. everything having to do with the wolf. I would say. Well, there are some tragic, odd, dark circumstances yes. that happen in this movie that it. Just just seems like they happen and then everyone goes, oh, okay, let's move on to the next plot point. I know which one you're yes. talking about and I was like, why is he not upset about this? Right. Should be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, that James Lapine, who did the, the book for the musical, did the screenplay, so I think that helps a little bit because at least yeah. he knows the material and knows how he can morph it into something. And I thought, you know, as a movie, they did a good job. Get away from me with that, you fool! I can't touch it. Remember. No, I forgot. By midnight tomorrow, bring me the items, or that child you wish for will never see the light of day! I don't like that woman. And Emily Blunt came out Surprising. of nowhere. Excellent. I mean, yeah. like, Edge of Tomorrow, she, like, completely confounded me with performance. I was so impressed with her. And then this, I'm like, what can't she do? She's amazing. Yeah. And Chris Pine, who knew yeah. he could sing? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, and he's, I actually think he should be nominated because I thought he was what? fantastic. He was pretty great. Well, he was okay. really good. Uh, well, I, you know, one of the things that musicals give you is you have a chance for actors not just to act, but actors to perform. And it really brings out these sides of some of these people mm -hmm. that you never expected. I mean, yeah, Chris Pine, he's about to open his mouth to sing, and I'm thinking, uh -oh. what's, <laughs> what's going to come out of this, you know? And right. then it's like, wow, he, he, can, he can really sing. Mm -hmm. And Partially. I also like James Corden kind of taking a lead role, and he's yeah. more kind of a, you know, a British actor is known in those circles, not as much over here. And for him to be so prominent in this film and do such a good job, I thought that was nice too. Magic? What kind of magic? Tell him. It's, uh, it's, it's a magic that defies description. Yes. How many beans? Six. The five. Five. They're worth a pound each, at least. Mm. Could Obama kill back someday? Well, yes. possibly. Well, Meryl Streep is also in this movie, and any movie that Meryl Streep is in, we probably have to talk about Meryl Streep, because, I mean, she's one of the greatest actresses ever, and she's absolutely excellent in this movie again. It's almost like we're taking it for granted. Oh, she's in another movie, again. again. She's great, and again. And we're gonna nominate her again. Again. 
I mean, I was crying when I was seeing her sing her major number. I thought she was, she was acting and singing, giving like a fantastic performance while she was singing. Yeah. A song that's very difficult to sing, I would say. I don't so, know, anything's yeah. difficult for me to sing, so. Who out there could love you more than I? What out there that I cannot supply? I thought the costumes were amazing. Yeah. You, know, oh. you know that they're going to win. Oh, Colleen Atwood. She always yeah. wins. Oh, another movie with great <laughs> right, costumes. It's like so another, let's move on. another Rob Marshall, another Meryl Streep performance, another Colleen Atwood costume design. Right. In terms of Rob Marshall, I do think it's probably Rob Marshall's at least most entertaining films in Chicago. Well, but in terms of musical numbers, I did think some of them were a little, it's not that they were uneven, it was just that they were more about storytelling than about like the spectacle of the musical number. But when the joke was obvious, like in a musical number like Agony, Agony. it's like the entire audience was supporting this film and they were just like wrapped up in every, I mean, it was so much fun. And I think that's when the film really soars is when the jokes are obvious or when the storyline yeah. becomes very clear. Into the Woods isn't a traditional musical like Sound of Music or Chicago, but it's very entertaining, it's glossy, it's fun, so I say see it. It's not the greatest musical you'll ever see, but it's a fun time that you'll have going into the woods to grandmother's house, to the festival, and just to the movies. So see it. Yeah, there are a few things to gripe about, but there are enough pleasant surprises to make it entertaining. So I'll say see it. Cheers. Cheers. Into the woods. Nobody? Nobody? I'm the only one? Mm-hmm. Hey, Rob Marshall. <laughs> Wicked. Wicked.